I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. Oh boy, we're gonna have a swell time tonight. Hadouken! Damn, I'm good. Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Hope you are well, friends. Okay, so it's another one of those episodes where we do our quarterly review. We want to look at all the projects that the Boeing Company have either proposed or worked on or considered uh, or have received planning permission, etc., etc., over the years and discuss what is exactly the uh, uh, the exact happenings with these these projects at this very moment in time. What what's going on? Are they actually going to happen? Or are they going to fade into the abyss? Um, many do, but uh, many also are working very well in the background and should hopefully be starting uh, reasonably soon, maybe towards the end of this year. Um, and just to clarify, if you watch my previous Q3 uh, review, you'll notice that some projects have been removed from the board. Why has that happened? Well it seems increasingly unlikely that they will get built and um, they potentially might be in states that are not uh, that uh, well, forward thinking when it comes to uh, new transport solutions. Uh, and they're, they're, thus it doesn't really make sense for me to waste time talking about them. So it might be the case as well that projects like this one, the LVCC loop, might be removed from the board at some point because we know it's been completed and we know the cost and we know that it's been successful. So there's there's no need for me to uh, constantly talk about them. So as you may know, the LVCC loop has been a very successful project. Um, it's been operational now for over two years, coming up to two and a half years. Um, during those two and a half years, there have been no accidents, no incidents, no near misses, no fires, um, no forced shutdowns. It, it's it's been a very successful um, project, both for the Boeing Company and the Convention Center, and hence that has led to many other projects. You may very well have seen uh, a post that I made um, where someone was in a vehicle in the Las Vegas Convention Center and they were traveling along at, at what looked like 70 miles per hour, but actually the driver had changed it to kilometers. So it was 70 kilometers per hour. Um, so that is a speed of about 45 miles per hour. I am, I am anticipating that they will increase that at some point and it will go up to 55. Um, I think that's about the limit for this system. And the capacity of this system continues to increase. Okay, that's enough about that project. Hawthorne Test Tunnel. As you know, that was the first project the Boeing Company ever completed. Uh, vehicles went through at 127 miles per hour. Um, that kind of proved that you can you know, drive cars in tunnels of that diameter and uh, gave kind of a basic understanding of how this would work for the Boeing Company. We then have our various Resorts Worlds projects. So as you know, Resorts Worlds Phase 1A has been completed and vehicles are operational in that part of the, uh, the system. Um, that is adding a nice little capacity boost for the overall Las Vegas Convention Center. Um, I'm guesstimating at this moment in time, it, it's adding an additional throughput of around 600 vehicles per hour. Or as I put it in this part here, uh, Passengers per hour per direction is also 600 because it is a single bore tunnel. It goes around in a circle. There's one station above ground and one underground. The underground one being at Resorts World. Okay, let's go back to our next project, which is Resorts World Phase 2A. The reason I've done Phase 2A and 2B rather than Phase 2 and 3 is because Phase 2A won't open without Phase 2B also being open. So to categorize them as different projects, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me. So as you may know, I have been talking a lot about Phase 2B Resorts World. They have done a lot of work creating a shaft in preparation for a TBM. 
they have now closed off that shaft at the surface. They've installed a load of steel beams and then they covered it over with some concrete uh, planks or slab, slabs precast and they've sealed it all up. Uh, the reason being is because they want to focus on other projects and they're probably going to come back to this project at the beginning of next year, if not in and around Christmas time, New Year. It's a shame. I think they could do that project at the same time as the uh, the Westgate Casino project, which is this one here. Um, this is the newest project that the Bourne Company have been um, working on. It's, it's a good project. I like the way it's set up. Um, it's got a good alignment. The costs are looking good. Uh, let's talk about that. So the project value, according to my estimates, based on the construction work that I've seen and the drawings that I have uh, managed to obtain, is $7.85 million. That is for a project length of 0 0.74 miles. Um, I have changed that. The reason I changed that is because it is a dual bore tunnel. And in, in previous um, videos, I've, I've kind of costed it based on it being a single tunnel, but it's obviously dual tunnel. So we should put it down as a dual bore system. Um, cost per mile is around $10.6 million based on my estimates, which is a good price. Um, we're looking at faster vehicles in this system, potential top speed of 70 miles per hour, which is definitely very, very doable. Um, as it's two tunnels, that's gonna be 900 per hour throughput. Sorry, 450 per hour throughput with 900 overall. This is quite a short system, really. You're probably gonna have up to 14 vehicles operational in that part of the system at any one time, potentially 16 maybe, but not much more than that. Probability of completion, 100%. Uh, it started 12th of February. I anticipate it will be finished around the 5th of July. They have not started boring yet, but that is two to three weeks away. What else have we got? So the Encore Win Casino. I won't spend too much time talking about this project because I've talked about it in the past. Um, I don't really know what's going on with this project because I assumed that uh, originally when it was proposed uh, at the end of 2020 that they were going to do this uh, alongside uh, Resorts World Phase 2A and 2B. Um, but basically all the noise in the background has, has kind of dissipated and very, very little has happened, which indicates to me that they're gonna do this part as part of the main Las Vegas loop. So that could be delayed by maybe a year. Ontario Airport loop is a, a no-go. The Boeing company withdrew from this project. Why did they withdraw from this project? Uh, the regulatory environment and just the general kind of um, political environment in California, it did not suit the Boeing company and they didn't feel welcome. Uh, it was around about the same time that Tesla moved its headquarters to uh, Austin, Texas. That's the headquarters for Tesla. And also the Boeing company has obviously its headquarters in, in Bastrop. Um, and it's around about that time that they decided that, hey, you know, we're gonna withdraw from this project. It's not really worth our time. Uh, CERN Particle Accelerator is a very interesting project uh, for uh, basically colliding particles together to, to, to see um, the consequences of that and, and, how, and what is the makeup of, of kind of um, the world basically. <laughs> uh, so some things that they've never seen before have occurred. Uh, it's the Higgs, Higgs boson is, is what they've discovered uh, thanks to the previous uh, CERN particle accelerator and they wanted to create a much larger one, uh, I believe three times the size. Um, and again, that's kind of falling into the wayside. There's, there's not the funding there at the moment. Um, Las Vegas Loop Nevada, this is the, obviously the most important project for the Boeing Company. If this project fell away, this would spread um, real problems for the Boeing Company, but it won't because everything in the background, whether it be planning permission, the, the political environment, and just the general excitement for the project has stayed fairly consistent. I've not made any changes on this one, uh, again, vehicle top speed, 80 miles per hour, average speed will be around 64, maybe 60 miles per hour in that kind of ballpark. It's technically under construction because the Westgate Casino Loop is part of that. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in two minds whether to have the Westgate Casino 
complete project on this spreadsheet, but I think it helps you guys understand and it provides a good kind of historical record for when we look back at these videos in three to four years time. Um, throughput 57,000 per hour, again, I, I still think that's kind of steep, but uh, it should certainly be above 40,000 passengers per hour. Uh, so I'm, but if they do achieve 57,000, that'll be 28,500. 48 underground stations that could potentially be up to 55 now. Um, probability of completion 97%. Obviously, they've just started, but again, you know, it, it could get downsized. Um, we then have these various other projects. Uh, the Austin Loop in Texas. There's been a lot of talk about this project, a lot of talk about it, and, and linking, linking it up to the, uh, the Gigafactory. I don't know really. Um, how confident the Boeing company is in doing that. There seems to be a little bit of resistance in the background, but again, that they, they, they are receptive to the Boeing company paying for the entire project. It might be a much uh, smaller, uh, uh, downscaled kind of capacity version of what we see here. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, there's been a lot of developments surrounding Fort Lauderdale. I might cover that in a future video. It looks like the board... Um, that, that runs the, the kind of local council in Fort Lauderdale has has changed hands and a, a couple of the new people that have joined the board are anti Boeing company, anti Tesla and very much kind of supportive of the existing infrastructure that exists in Fort Lauderdale which is pretty garbage and they don't want any money to be spent. They would rather people sit in traffic and they would rather kind of the entire city stagnates because really all the good money in Florida is going to Miami at this moment in time. Fort Lauderdale is, is not like really seen as kind of a, a hip, hip place. The, the the real money is in like downtown Miami. So if they mess that up, then it's on them. But um, we'll see. It could still happen, but I, I, I'd say it's like uh, it's 50 50. Uh, Adelanto Test Tunnel that finished. Uh, they did some testing with some machines. Um, and then they kind of closed it off and then they moved all the facilities to a bath stop for some new test tunnels. As you know, in my previous news episode, we have seen a new test tunnel being bored. So there's two test tunnels. They're about 0 0.18 miles long, each of them, maybe slightly less than that. Um, probably a lot less than that, actually, but so that should probably be 0 0.3. But uh, it, it's good to see them testing various machines and obviously new technologies will be implemented into machines and then tested on that site before they are implemented on other projects. They might also start building Boeing Company bricks on this site because the, uh, the geology is perfect for those machines. San Antonio Loop seems very unlikely that will get built. Um, South Padre Island, let me go down here because you guys probably can't see that now, can you? Okay, so if you, if there's numbers that you don't you can't see, then you'll be able to see them now. Sorry about that. Um, then we have our South Padre Island Tunnel. Oh, da, da, da. I don't like it when he does that. Um, not too sure that's going to happen. Uh, it wasn't really a good use case for it, and it was just kind of a proposal thrown out there. Um, Miami, on the other of a hand, I'm hearing good things in the background about this project, and. Um, as it goes through planning, we, we should hear announcements uh, in Q4 of this year, if not Q1 of next year. Um, I've divided the Miami project into three parts because that's how it's being proposed. So the North Miami Beach uh, loop will be built first, followed by an extension up to the Hard Rock, and then this FIU Biscayne loop um, probably a couple of years afterwards. Uh, Kyle pedestrian underpass this project was proposed it was looking like it was going to get built um, and then they realized that it'd just be a lot cheaper to uh, to use different methods um, and they have decided to opt out of it and uh, it probably won't ever happen um, another way of doing that tunnel would be with pipe jacking and you could probably do that for, for a lot less than this if you just want a pedestrian tunnel it's 10 foot in diameter um so it might be that they could do a 10 foot diameter tunnel for less than 2 million like 1.9 million us dollars 
Then we've got the i35 commuter tunnel in Texas again. I don't know what's going on in the background. There seems to be a little bit of resistance, but I think they want the Boeing company to pay for the entire thing. Uh, and if the Boeing company has enough TBMs and enough staff, they probably will do that. So again, that's one of them that's like a 60-40. And the Giga Texas tunnel, that will link up with the Austin um, loop. And we expect to hear more about that uh, in the next sort of six months or so. Okay, hope you enjoyed that update. I will include a copy of this Excel document in the description below uh, and you can read and scrutinize that to your heart's consent. If you've got some ideas about how I can improve this document, please let me know. I'm thinking about adding the, the speed of the TBM during construction uh, just to give us kind of a reference in the future. The reason I haven't added that yet is because there's not been that many tunnels constructed. So it is kind of like most of the tabs would say zero. So um, I think now it's possibly viable doing that. So I might add the speed of the TPM, TBM. Tell me if you think that's good. If you have any other ideas about columns I can add and, and things that I can, you know, talk about. Let me show you what's already there. So if we go this way, as you can see, we've got status, three ports, passengers per hour per direction, which is uh, this one here. Stations are the above ground, underground, how many uh, are the elevators, are the ramps, probability of completion, POC, the start date, the finish date, and like the total amount of time. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully you're a little bit more informed about what's going on and i will continue to update this document and hopefully i'll be able to get the next one out in april which would line up more with how quarterly reports are usually released uh please put your questions in the comments below please like and subscribe if you've not already done so if you didn't like the video dislike it and then tell me why in the comments below and if you really, really do like the channel and you're kind of supportive about what's going on, consider joining our Patreon, consider joining our Discord server and consider following me on Twitter. Okay, hope you had a good time. And remember, don't be boring. I'll see you on the next one. And please do take care. Goodbye. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Come get some. お前はもう死んでいる。何？せやがる。